what's up everybody supreme decisions here and yes tonight i'm actually in well actually it's daytime but anyway we're here in the studio at world play studios and i want to give you something because again like i said we're coming to a close on the series of 100 and we're going to start immediately with a post I got for you guys is going to be done in the master class. So if you don't have a master class tier, whatever, if you haven't joined the master class, now it's time to get in there because March is going to be explosive. What I mean by that is I'm going to give you guys tactics that not only the prosecution uses, but the counters to those tactics. So let me get into it because today, we are going to do Malloy v. Hogan. And the reason why we're doing this is because I had a couple people contact me in regards to forced ID. Now, as you know, I'm here in Texas, and Texas is not a, as what they call a show and ID state. Well, guess what? No state is. Because even if you are required to show ID, it does not change the police officer's procedure of first articulating, which is required by Terry v. Ohio, the crime you are suspected of and the injury you are suspected of causing. So what happens is a lot of time, most people can tell you, oh, I have a right to do this, but have no idea what that right is or why that right is. Well, we know, according to the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution, that you have a right to remain silent against self-incrimination. Under Malloy v. Hogan, 378 U.S. 1, 1964, reading, was a case in which the Supreme Court of the United States deemed defendants Fifth Amendment privilege not to be compelled to be a witness against himself was applicable within states as well as federal courts. Because you have the right to remain silent. And I keep throwing in this case, Florida v. Royer. Why? Because you have the right to remain silent and don't have to participate. They still have their procedures. Their procedures still have to be lawful. They still have to have the action because even whenever I speak about other things where they say, well, why do you have to have a victim? It doesn't say that. Well, how do you have standing? It comes from an act that is fairly traceable to the actions or inactions of the defendant has to be an injury caused by the person defended. Why? Because of the confrontation clause. Now, I'm not sure why people don't get that because I've put up Supreme Court cases. I've said it like a hundred thousand times, but people still can't wrap their mind around it. Why? Because they are stuck in the programming. Now, I constantly use that word programming because that's pretty much what it is. You see it constantly and it's reinforced through what people are saying versus what you are actually looking at and reading. So the Fifth Amendment prohibits state infringement on a privilege against self-incrimination. So when an officer tells you, I need your name, at what point do you have to give him your name or her? You don't. And if they force you to identify or fingerprint you, because remember, remember this case where it says your fingerprints still fall under the guidelines of the Fourth Amendment search and seizure. They have to have probable cause to get your fingerprints. Because remember, the Fingerprint Act actually comes under the identification of criminals act. They are already criminalizing you without any cause. This is why I spoke about the illegal arrest. These are things that 
you, if you want police reform, it must be fight back reform. And you must do this in their courts. Because how do you get them to apologize? How do you get them to change? You punch the bully back in their mouth. You also beat them in their own place. Because now, if they're losing, guess what they don't want to lose? Money. The more money they lose, the more they have to retrain. They have to re-employ. They have to do other things that doesn't allow bad officers to remain. And it's up to you to get, to, get them to that point. The Fifth Amendment prevents the federal government from denying the privilege and applying the privilege against self-incrimination, the same standard determine whether an accused silence is justified regardless of whether it's a federal or state proceeding at which he is called to testify. You don't even have to be testifying because you remember the statement, anything you say can and will be used against you. Not sure why they read the last part in the court of law because generally it's not done in a lawful proceeding. Why? Because we allow these things to happen. So again, when we're talking about Florida v. Royer, when we're talking about not, be, not participating, when we're talking about Hybel v. Nevada, they have to articulate the actual crime. Or when we're talking about Bet, um, Terry v. Ohio and we're speaking of must articulate. These things all fall in line with Malloy v. Hogan. Why? Because you have the right to remain silent and also not give out this information. Why? Because you have the right to privacy. You don't have to prove anything. You are not even required to give an alibi. You are not the one that has to explain anything. Keep that in mind. You have the right against self-incrimination and even your fingerprints must go through the exact same scrutiny as a quote unquote pat down, as a search of your conveyance or vehicle. Why? Because police procedure requires them to actually have probable cause why they can't just stop you and ask for your driver's license. Why they can't just stop you for any longer than a certain amount of time. These things are done, why? Not only for their benefit, but they actually get to go and solve actual crimes. But it is also for you but it's up to you to enforce them and apply them and make them do the thing the right way. That's all I got for you guys for today for the most part. You guys will be seeing a lot more of me. It's going to be coming more fast, more furious, and on more platforms. And a lot of you guys are going to be getting upset because, yeah, I'm going to be shifting a lot of this over to Patreon because YouTube is starting to delete my videos. Not sure why. But I got notified that a lot of videos were missing out of the 100. So I'm going to redo. I actually have to redo 20. So it's going to be redone. And then we're going to go on and keep it going, keep it growing. But look for us on other platforms. And we're going to continue going. We're going to continue growing. And if you have not joined the master class, join the master class. Or pick one of the other three tiers. Those same tiers are also on Patreon. So these things are going to be available to you and it's going to be available to you soon, like ASAP. And continue to support the podcast. 99 cents, $4.99, $9.99, or do your donations through Apple Pay. And lastly, grab your t-shirts. What we're going to actually work towards is a t-shirt of the month and we're also going to start doing giveaways. So look for those things to start coming. I love you guys. Supreme, out. <laughs>